All the information that spatial data inherently gives us can be combined and queried along with the attribute information. One particular use of this is to find locations that meet a defined set of criteria. This is also called site suitability or suitability analysis. And we use spatial or attribute queries and even overlay analysis to evaluate potential locations. Suitability analysis can be used to support decision making and can answer a number of questions such as finding suitable locations to site businesses, finding the best paths in which to site um, pipelines, evaluate which areas are the most suitable for wildlife, or locating areas that are most at risk from flooding. In these types of analysis you need to decide what constitutes best or even most suitable and that's done by defining a number of different criteria. So this is going to be based on subject knowledge and can include a number of different factors such as policy regulations, industry standards, past research, all of which are going to depend on the question that you're asking of your data. Usually to find features that meet your criteria you'll use a series of either logical and or spatial selections to pull out that information. Logical selections use the attribute information stored within the layer. So for example, you could be finding the number of land parcels that are over 0.15 of an acre. You can also use the spatial properties of your data to define the locations relative to each other, such as whether you're um, near to a river. So most analysis find, loca find locations using a series of these functions, both logical and spatial selections, that are run in sequence. So you run a number of different tools that form a model. Boolean suitability models divide locations into places that are either suitable or not suitable. So it's either a yes or a no. But you can go a little bit further and include some kind of ranking or define the criteria based on weight so that there is a little bit more choice between whether it's yes or no. Weighted suitability models allow you to assign some kind of importance on the criteria so that you're ranking locations relative to each other within the model. This approach can be really useful for what-if scenarios. You can evaluate a number of different scenarios, compare the results that you get under each, each one of the different cases. Weighted suitability models can also be used to evaluate the effects of different industry standards to see the different results that you're getting following each one. Cost path analysis is used to model paths and can be used to find the optimal way to move goods or people using transport networks. It can also be used to estimate travel paths across areas. So you could be studying wildlife or even used to find lost people. Modelling paths can be defined by existing infrastructural features, things like railways or roads. They could also be overland paths such as wildlife tracks. Optimal routes need to consider which is the least cost path. But cost is anything that will actually deter travel. So who would want to climb every mountain when you could go around the outside and it doesn't take any longer? Obviously, any climbers are excluded from that question. Of course, you might reconsider your answer if, in fact, the difference between the two routes is days in length. And cost needs to take account of all of those different factors. So both suitability modelling and cost path analysis can use either raster or vector data. And in both approaches, many of the methods that you use are going to be much the same. When you choose the criteria, the importance or the weights that you base on those criteria is going to be using some kind of expert knowledge. But in some cases, there's going to be some amount of subjectivity that's actually attached to the choice of those criteria. Because sometimes criteria are actually difficult to define. You don't know the exact value that you need to select. So your results are going to be based on how accurately those criteria has de been defined. But whatever you use, by using spatial modelling, it gives you additional information that allows you to then make informed decisions.